subscribe, like, remind. I'm going to follow the collection of paints to fill in color samples so I'll know what the paint looks like wet. I'm using the number one Dynaw brush. It's a watercolor brush made of squirrel hair, and it holds a lot of water. I have a cup of water, and now we lift the plastic protector, which I can also put this way so that it doesn't touch the wet paint. I'm going to put that over there. We follow left to right beginning with rose matter to cadmium yellow, ending with Indian red to gold. They have white gold, bluish gold, and gold in the metallic colors. Not all watercolor sets come with those. This is the Kuritake Gansei Tanbi color chart. And these are the Kuritake Kanze Tambi colors. Now, let me see. I want to move the water over there. There we go. The paint is here. The chart is here. If I wish to, I may also paint on the top cover on the inside, but I choose not to. It's much more convenient to use this 5x7 chart. Let me make sure that we're, we can see everything. See all the colors? Good. I'm very pleased. Tell me if you can't see them, okay? Here we are. Now. I'm going to take just a piece of tape. This is an artist masking tape. Just a piece of that. So that I can hold my color chart in place and not worry that I'm pushing it around. I have some paper towel. I use the Viva cloth paper towel because, well, it works like cloth. Starting with the rose matter. Rose matter. 
This was Rose Matter Deep. This is Rose Matter. I guess that would be Rose Matter Medium. Red. Cadmium red. Cadmium red looks a little bit orange by comparison to red. Cadmium scarlet. Well, cadmium scarlet looks a lot more orange than scarlet. That's why it's important to lay your colors out on a piece of watercolor paper so you can see what it looks like when it's wet. This is, need a little more water. This is cadmium orange. And that's truly a yellow orange. And this is cadmium yellow. A truly yellow yellow. Now, as we move to the next row, this row will dry. This is Aurelian. Aurelian, Aurelian is a yellow. It's um. Deep yellow, not a bright yellow, not a lemony yellow. Oops, need a drop. Okay. This is lemon yellow. You can see the difference in the two colors, but it's very slight. I'm going to lift off some of this. There's a lot of water there. I'm going to lift some of that off. Okay. Now we're moving into the greens. This is greenish yellow. This is olive green. It comes on very smoothly. So when I'm done with the chart, I'm going to show you a little sketch I did, and I'll paint that with these paints. This is lime green. This is sap green light. I'm sure you're familiar with all or most of the colors, but if you're not, you might enjoy picking up the button palette of watercolors so you can become familiar with all the hues. This is sap green. A little bit darker than the sap green light, which is what you would expect. Yes. And this is hooker's green. And you'll find that all the good sets of watercolor will have hooker's green available. It's wonderful for landscaping. And it's very good for making skin tones and shadows as well. Now we're moving on to some more greens. This is sap green deep. This 
this is forest green. Forest green has a blue tint to it. It's not aqua, but it does have a touch of blue in it. But then we have turquoise green deep. Now in the palette, it looks almost like it. an ultramarine blue. It's so dark, but once you lift it out with some water, you can see it does have a green tinge. Or a blue tinge since it's a green. This is Viridian. Viridian is a lovely blue green. Well, they're all lovely, aren't they? Now we're moving lighter still. This is Malachite. Like the green stone, Malachite. onto Horizon Blue. Looks a bit like a very light Cerulean. But we'll get to Cerulean soon enough. This is Pale Ultramarine. When you look closely, at the color chart after you're done, you really will see the differences in the colors. The only way to study color is to use it. Here's the turquoise blue. You'll see it's a little bit more blue than the turquoise green. You can do wonderful skies with these in a watercolor. Yeah. This is cerulean, and in the pan, it looks very, very dark. Let's see. Doesn't the horizon blue look like a paler version of the cerulean? Now this is cobalt. Cobalt is a very dark blue when you're using it with your acrylic or gouache or oil paint. But in watercolor, see? This is ultra, oops, a little more water for that one. This is ultramarine. And in the palette, they look just very close, just one a little bit lighter than the others. But you can see in the ultramarine, there's a touch violet. This is the Prussian blue. Prussian blue is much brighter. Touch of the gray in it. But much brighter. This is indigo. Indigo is a blue violet color. And again, when you see it in an oil paint or you see it in an acrylic paint, it's a lot darker. And sometimes in the right light, or the wrong light, it looks black. Now this is blue-gray deep. And that's obviously a gray. Then 
This is what they call imperial violet. This is very much like a dioxidine, diox, dioxidine purple, a true purple. It's beautiful. Purple is one of those colors I find, this shade of purple is one of those colors I find very difficult to achieve from just blending. I do get there, but it's tricky for me. And this is cobalt violet. Cobalt violet is lighter. As you can see, I put it back there. How well they work together. When you practice with color, you'll see how well certain colors work together to support each other, and how well colors work together by opposing each other. This is true purple. Purple is almost pink. I much prefer the cobalt violet and the imperial violet to the purple. This is lilac. Lilac is so very pale, so very perfect for pansies. This is cherry blossom. Cherry blossom pink, a beautiful color. It's a color that looks very good on me. Did you know that though? If you look good in pink, all pinks don't look good on you. All blues don't look good on you. This is rose beige. Hmm. You shouldn't just assume because something is pink or blue and they always look good on you that it will look on you. You'll need to hold it up to your face. This is natural beige. This is yellow ochre. It does look truly like a yellow ochre. Very nice. This is burnt sienna. See how well ochre and sienna work together, almost like a yellow and an orange. Wonderful colors to use for landscapes, but also wonderful colors to use on your pets. And this is maroon. Maroon is lovely and deep but not bright as red. And then this is Indian red. A dull red. A kind of red that's really wonderful to use in paintings of trees. Raw umber deep, which is a real good dirt brown. Now, if you're using colors that are supposed to be really deep, you do have to build them up after they're dry and add more and more to them. So this color chart will show you what it looks like when you first lay it down. But if you want it to be darker, you just need to build up the colors. Now this is white. Now, if you don't like to use this white, you can always use a tube of white gouache. They have tubes of white in watercolor sets as well, but those are actually gouache. So you might as well just get yourself a small tube of white gouache. This is, oops, I need a little bit more. This is the bluish gold. It's very pale. add a little bit more. It's 
so you can see it better. But it is a pale gold. And this is gold. If you look very closely, you can see the difference. This one has a hint of the blue to darken it. Okay. So all of my colors are complete. And now I have a color chart that I can refer to when I can't quite remember what colors I really want to use. Very important to have this on hand. Now, I'm going to show you a quick use of this. I've done a quick sketch with black ink. Let me move things over a little bit here. Let me make sure everything is here for you. It's a cityscape. There's no real location. Yeah, there's no real location. I'm going to move this over easier. It's easier for me. Okay. I only need that for the water. It's not important. Yeah. Move myself over here. And I'm still going to use the number one Dene brush. And I'm going to start with the sky. And I'm going to remind myself what the paints look like on my color chart. And I think. I'd like to use the ultramarine. Now add water to that. There we go. I'm just going to. Here. I'm going to let that dribble around. It's a nice, quick, happy sketch. So it'll look like there's more. Blue in the sky, doesn't it? Okay. Now, I'm going to take a touch of the ultramarine pale. That's this one right here. And I'm going to put it in the clouds a bit. And then I'm going to take a touch of the gray and just bring a little more of that in. to be stronger so I'd have some more in while it's still wet. This is a travel journal, a watercolor paper travel journal of a nice long side. If you move it the other way it makes a landscape but I like a tall portrait. Now 
For the pavement, I want to take the black. This pavement is black. Okay. I'm going to pick it up. I know it may seem silly, but Now I've made the pavement pavement gray. Okay. Now I'm going to use a little bit of the raw umber right here on the sides. And we bring the gray in for the sidewalk. This little curve. Okay. Now, I think one of these buildings is going to be orange. This one right here. And this building is going to have an orange roof. Now, this is olive green. I'm going to make this little building olive green. But you can see that as they go down, they're transparent. And the black ink lines that I've left behind are still there. And I think red will be the color of this tall building. It's three stories tall. It's brick. And I think what color roof should it have? I want to give it a yellow roof. Okay. I'm going to give this one a yellow roof on top of the blue, and that'll make it a green. Very nice. Now let's come back over here. A little gray here. The sidewalk that runs around the side of this house. Okay. Now I have a park over here, but what colors? I'm going to make this car gold. Blue gold. Be a Cadillac, doesn't it? There we go. What's nice about doing this kind of a sketch is that you don't have to take yourself so seriously. You can just have a wonderful time.
or somebody who has oh, a walker or something. And then here, come into a park, and I'm going to use the umber for the path. There we are. Open. Now let's look at the glands. I think for the trees, I like the sap green light. And that would be this one. Just gonna dab in the colors and let it rest where it wants. And then we have some lovely little plants. A tree here. And some lovely little plants here. And I don't care that I draw over the lines. That's not important. What's important when you do a sketch like this is to capture the light and the mood of the day. It's busy. It's morning. People are on their way to work, out walking their babies in their carriages. Making her a green backpack. They're going to school. But it's not so busy that the streets are packed. Now I think I'm going to use the regular sap green for the grass. It's running a bit, but I'll take care of that in a moment. I'm going to come here and just pick it up with my napkin so I can make it lighter. Now I'm going to work on my pedestrian's colors. I think we're going to give this one a, a blue dress, and this one's got blue jeans, okay, and this one has blue jeans on as well. Over here with the blue-gray. We've got that hoodie. Guys wearing glasses. Do the same for her jeans. Because as much as we protest when we're young that we don't want to look like everybody else, all we do is end up looking like everybody else. We're all nonconformists until we're not. They all wear the same dark hoodies. They work, travel around in Levi's and black khakis. And wear red sneakers. And give her Indian red hair. Here we go. Okay, my picture is complete. Of course, it's a sketch. It's not a fine draw. It's not a fine work of art, and it's a good color sketch. I've used lots of different colors. We obviously depicted a city block across the street from a park, could be anywhere in the country, even Florida, which is where I live now. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you enjoy sharing with me the Gonze Tambay paints. Another look here. 
there's my quick sketch. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this tiny video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my work, please click on subscribe and that little bell will remind you when I have new videos. I'm just experimenting with ASMR, trying to get just the right tone of voice, just the right background sounds for you. I hope it's been helpful. And Renard, my muse, says thank you as well.